103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are recording this on Sunday morning, September 12th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, what's up? Happy to be here. Hey, welcome. Our guests today are uh, George Brown, the second and a half. Hello. Hello. And Dread Pirate Higgs, how are you? How are you there? Hello in Canada. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Wombat, what's our topic for today? Let me see. Can you guys hear me still? Great. Yep. Uh, yep. Random microphone problems. Hey, today we're going to be talking about uh christian values and i think most likely the most interesting point in christian values and how the christian god betrays every single christian value <laughs> well we're gonna get yeah. into that in more detail yeah. and when we start the show but before we go into the show i'd like to throw it up for our own dread power hicks for our weekly invocation dread Arr. so this one's a short one today okay and it's in latin oh interesting sunt superis suajura and that means the gods have their own laws by Ovid. Nice. Bra- nice. Bra- man. Man. Question yep. mark. All right. So now uh, I want to bring up why we're talking about today's show. But before we do that, I need to have a quick little segment called Larry, what's on your shirt? What's on your shirt, Larry? Tell me what's oh, palm, on your shirt. Palm trees and alligators. I mean, um, palm trees oh. and alligators. You got some swans on there, I think. Yeah, there's some maps in the background. Compasses. There's some maps. Very, very, very nice. Yeah. George the second and a half. How you been? Oh, I've been looking into narcissism. Ooh. It's a great, <laughs> it's a great uh, topic, and just. Um, uh, searching for it in my own background, my own life, how narcissists have touched me. Can I recognize narcissists? Are they running the planet? Mm. They were certainly running the country for the last four years. Uh, well, we got that. We got oh that. Gosh. In a way, we I'm not grateful. We don't talk about that anymore. Thank goodness, yeah. right? <laughs> but, but, in, but in general, I mean, the concept of psychopaths running the show mm. throughout history and in, in our modern life is, yeah. is fascinating me. Yeah, it's terrifying sometimes, too. Mm-hmm. Though oh, also, yeah. like, you know, I always try to, I always forget to look in the mirror, but there's also, like, a really fine line between personal introspection and enjoyment of personal of introspection, right? Like, because you can't look into yourself and like, man, I just became a way better person after looking at myself. I saw so many of my own problems. Now I'm so much better. It's like, wait, no, that's another problem. Because now I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, called geez, here's a medical, medical student's disease, I think, or uh, medical student syndrome. When you're 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 studying medicine and every every ailment that you study, you think you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Dread just took his headphones off after we were about to go to him, but uh, he looks like he's doing good. So when he, when he can hear us, we'll jump back to him. Dread, how you doing? What's up with you? I'm doing well. Um, uh, the car, I think I told you about being hit, hit by a deer. Uh, so the provincial... Um, no. ICBC. Let's the get insurance. this straight. Did the car? Did the deer hit the car, or did the car hit the deer? No, I actually had it on dash cam, and it's yeah. very clear uh-huh. that the uh, that the deer hit the car, smack wow. in the driver's door. Mm-hmm. Um, had that been a an elk or a moose, I'd be dead for sure. Wow, um, no question. Yeah, but, uh, I've, I've definitely hit him before. <clears throat> And it, I hit one in a Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And it killed the deer. The, the deer died. Um, oh. But uh, ICBC has written off my car. So I'm waiting for a settlement, and then I'm going to go shopping for another car. Oh, wow. What does ICBC stand yeah. for? What does ICBC? Insurance Corporation of British Columbia. 
Yeah. So it's a it's a government run insurance company. Oh, no. And what? it's mandatory. You have no choice. You must have insurance and if you and you must have it through them. Is yeah. it a re pretty reasonable rates? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> so speaking of which, what kind of car are you planning on getting? Like what kind of car would satisfy a, a deep sea possiferian? Well, it's got to be something that I can tow my little uh, bowler behind. I, okay. You know, which I use for uh, sec security working on the coast. I'm actually thinking uh, probably an Audi Q7 or something. Ooh, wow, that's fancy. Yeah, that's fancy. Yeah, I I had an A3 and I really really liked Audi. Um, and uh, yeah, but I just need something a little higher, something a little easier to get in and out of. Sure. Uh, my yeah, sports cars are just. They're just too hard to get in and yeah. out of, so. Yeah. They are really yeah. fussy, yeah. Uh, I got, uh, so I, the car that I drive is not a fancy car by any measure. It's one of the first cars I ever had, but I gotta be honest with you, you know, I love, I love the tiny little car that I got because it's so nice to be able to park wherever I want. And right. if, if it's a car door hits mine in on the parking lot, I don't even freak out. Like, that's not a big deal. Like if there was like a crazy hell storm, we're like, eh, it's fine. Like my car, it's total value. I think on Kelly blue book would be like $3,000. I can get like, oh, wow. I can get another one if I need what it. Is it? Get it's a Chevy Sonic. And in my head, it's a really good car to have in America. Cause G it's an all GM parts for the most part. And we have a GM right. plant nearby. So my car broke down and I was like, Oh, let me just go on YouTube video, figure out what the hell's wrong with it. And then I just order the parts there in here in 24 hours. And I put it in myself because yeah. it's all so you're one of those guys who has a car that if you fill it up with gas, it doubles in value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. And I'm like five star rate has got more, uh, uh, airbags than any other car. And it's like, you oh, know, cool. it's, uh, subclass. And I'm like, you know, I'm happy with this thing. If I were to get another car, I made like a whole Excel table of things that I wanted to get. And every single one of them caused me more work to do or would cost me more long-term money to maintain. And I'm like, why, where's the convenience in having a sports car if I have to take it in somewhere to store up someone else to work on it or have to only use premium gas or I can't, you know, put like a sticker on the side because it reduces the value of the car. It's like, this is crazy. I just want to be able to do what I want with my own thing. And so right. I'm thinking, I'm going to ride this out until I, I, I can get something really worthwhile. Though, speaking of which, I have a lot of conversations about people with the cars that they want, but also talking to them about their Christian values. And what I found really interesting was this thought process that I had where someone says, hey, all my Christian values are important to me. And I'm like, okay, cool. And of course, the God that they believe in is important to them, and that's cool. But their God that they believe in has betrayed every single Christian value that they have. According to the Bible, we should say. Absolutely. According to, according to their holy book that describes their God, their God has betrayed every single one of the <laughs> principles that they hold from their book from their God to be mm -hmm. self-evident and true and worthwhile. And so right. what do I mean by that? I think it would be fun ex exercise. So at least go through the 10 commandments and show one by one, you know, as they're applicable, how God has actually betrayed or broken the principles or espoused in the, in the commandments. And I think George, you're going to have some fun stuff to weigh in because the Jewish uh, Ten Commandments and the Christian Ten Commandments are fairly copacetic with each other. You, you'll find there's a lot of similarity there. But I think uh, as a quick little Bible study, maybe we should just pull up the list of the Ten Commandments, right? So Good idea. Here's the first one. All right. I'm going to try my best to get this out. So Ten Commandments, uh, first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not have gods before me. Or you should not have any other gods before me, right? And there's different versions in terms of wording, but you shouldn't have any other gods before me. And I found that to be a really interesting concept. Larry, you may appreciate this because until this point, I wasn't aware that there were other gods. So it's a very, right. very strange <laughs> first rule, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the Bible, when he's talking about we and us, when he's talking about Adam and Eve saying, uh, we shouldn't let them eat of the tree of life because they could live as long as us, they could be mortal. And you think, we, us, what are you talking about? You know, if you're the only God, but of course, 
the, the Jewish people used to uh, worship multiple gods, and that's sure. where that came yeah. from. Also, I, some people would argue like there's the royal we, but the whole idea of saying in your first rule, the first rule of making God happy is don't listen to all those other gods. I'm the best one. And that's like, mm -hmm. isn't this a monotheistic religion? Yes. But the other gods don't matter. It's like, what other gods? What are we talking about here? Yeah, like, well, if, I, if I were to go royal, to another Christian, go ahead, Larry. I was just going to say that the royal we didn't come around until later. Uh, kings of, the, I think it was queens of England, um, introduced that concept. I think it was Queen Elizabeth, mm. um, maybe may Victoria. But I mean, we're talking like 1500s. Okay. And uh, the, the right. Genesis was written 2,000 years before that. Mm. So, you know, they, it's not the royal we. You know, some people claim it is, but the concept didn't exist then. Cool. George, it looked like you were about to say something. I was just going to say, I, I, I don't like that rule because it's so boring to only mm. have one God, right? I mean, those Greeks, man, they had all that whole, what is it, a pantheon of gods? Yeah. Right. The, the, the Norse people, yeah. they had all those people, you know, they're all and, different. A lot of this, fun. Yeah, this particular God, Yahweh, was the Jewish God of war. So he was equivalent to like Mars in the in the Roman gods. Ares, yeah. Or, the, oh, who's, the mean God. who's Mars? Is that Greek? Uh, yeah. I'm not the one to ask, probably. Uh, Dred, what do you think? Roman. Um, well, I was going to say that uh, polytheism lends itself more to... Um, people cohabitating because it's, there's an appreciation that there's a church here to, uh, um, to Venus, uh, uh, you know, a temple here to Mars, another temple to Jupiter. Uh, and all these devotees can um, quite easily get along with one another because um, they're not sharing the exact same faith and they're not competing for that sort of totalitarian rule that a single God um, of a monotheistic religion uh, absolutely demands. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, I think here, well, <clears throat> if I were to do a three steps of why I think this rule is silly, it's one, it should, the rule should have been, I'm the only God, right? It shouldn't have been, Hey, all the other gods aren't real. I'm the, I'm the most real or like, don't hold yeah. any of these other gods to my level. Cause I'm the best God. Cause yeah. if I go up to any yeah. Christian, I'd be like, Hey, so Christianity, polytheistic religion, right? It's like, no, it's monotheism. There was only one God. It's like, well, even God tells me not to listen to the other gods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We so like even about... God's impression is there's other gods, right? So yeah. Right. what are you talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking about narcissism a little earlier and this rule is no, nothing, if not narcissistic and it vain is. too, it which is right a deadly right. sin. Yeah, it's the whole, I am a jealous God and uh -huh. I'm the only one you should be paying attention to. And it just throws a <laughs> every red flag of like, oh man, you may not even be the nicest of the gods that are mm -hmm. asking me to worship them then. That's like the immediate gut reaction that I have. Anyway, I think yeah. we can move on to the next one. Uh, the next one is thou shalt not make craven images of me. And so there's, you know, there's been a lot of interpretations how to take this. I'll even take a different version. Uh, thou shalt not take my name of the Lord by God in vain. Some people will say that some people use that as a means of don't blaspheme. Don't, uh, don't make like images of me. Some people have taken it that far, but basically respect me no matter what, don't use my name in vain. Don't make craven images of me. What's craven. Um, you know, <laughs> dread dreads making some <laughs> hand signals here, probably best for radio, but I would say, unpolite maybe uh images of me here's so I here's it up. It graven, graven images are are carved you know like yeah, cowardly made out of stuff that's funny craven me contemptibly lacking in courage contemptibly lacking in courage so cowardly here, cowardly um you know blasphemous insulting like sort of crude i would consider all those count so I cannot tell you how many times I've been to churches where there's a giant picture of Jesus dying on a cross. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that's probably not the image that he would probably <laughs> want people to have was just like, look at all these awesome things I did. Remember that fish thing that I did? Remember that? It was pretty <laughs> awesome, right? No one takes pictures of the fish, but they have me up there being really uncomfortable. And I got, I'm like half naked. Like, this isn't my best day. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> this isn't, like, be, 
if he did come back and like they say they will, you know, he'll be forced to look at all these images of him on the cross yeah. and even around people's necks. And yeah. He'd be like, cars. don't you know how much I hate crosses? Like, don't you know, like, don't you guys realize that? But also on the side note, that's weird that that's rule number two. It's not don't enslave people. And it's not like hey, treat everybody right. with respect. It's don't use my name in vain. If anything, that's almost going back to Larry's point of narcissism, like one of the most expressed forms of vain vanity in a yeah. sense. It was like, I think we might be familiar with the story of the devil being sent to hell due to him thinking he was as pretty as God and God freaking out. And it's like, God, your second rule for people being nice to each other is don't even use your name in vain. That's crazy. That's kind of a yeah. nutty. That's a vain, that's vain in its own right. Yeah. Larry, we could you got be talking to? about, um, opportunity cost uh, opportunity cost is for those who may not know is that you can have a hot dog or a, an ice cream cone if you okay. choose the ice cream cone then the opportunity cost was the hot dog you yeah. lost the hot dog you could have had the hot dog well an opportunity cost for uh, for what we're talking about here is that he he forbids shellfish <clears throat> when he could have forbidden slavery Right. He went for shellfish. Yes. <laughs> that, type of thing. Yeah. that was, the, that was his priority. Yeah. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He, 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 that's funny. He kept the seven. Okay. Uh, here is my other thoughts to like blasphemy exists. And I think most Christians would agree that God created everything yet. No people are connecting the dots that that also means God created blasphemy. Cause then it's just like, Oh no, he just like, yes, he did. If he created everything that counts for the bad stuff too. Right. right. And yeah. so if you're not, if it's a sin to use the Lord's name in vain, because that's blasphemous, then that is in its own right, a creation that God knew was going to happen when he made this universe and they had every power to stop from happening yet chose to still do it. That mm -hmm. is in his own right, a self-fulfilling sin that he, that he himself, you know, prescribed. Yeah. Well, Isaiah 45, seven <clears throat> says he creates he can, he does create evil. He says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. So I, the Lord do all these things is what he says. So he created yeah. anything that's evil. Mm -hmm. So no blessing, but I blessing George, what do you got? Um, where are we? On? Are we doing the 10 commandments and which yeah. one are we on? We're on number two. We're on number two. Okay. Uh, uh, where does vein come in? Uh, on that one. Yeah. Thou shall not take the Lord thy God in vain. And now, what one. does that mean? What does vain mean in this context? Uh, lightly. lightly. We got to look up words. Yeah. For, for, yeah. Don't use it for your own self-interest. Don't, don't use my name in the interest of something that you don't use me as a means to your ends. Use me always as an ends or something like that. That'd be mm -hmm. like a straightforward context of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It, essentially only using the Lord's name in praise of the Lord. Yeah, but not into make myself look better so I can sell more right. hats and stuff like that. Yet that's what every Christian does when they're like, you know, they got that little cross thing. It's like, how much does that golden diamond studded cross cost? Yeah. Well, you know, it was worth it for me to show off that I'm, you know, not just a regular Christian, but like <clears> one <throat> out there. Yeah. So like, I oh. can't say, I can't say, oh God, my gas tank is only half full. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Even but, that would be blasphemous. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even that would be blasphemous. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. You're using his name as a means to express disinterest. A lot of Christians will say, don't use the word Jesus as an exclamation or Christ there as an exclamation. That's I was talking <clears throat> to it. All right, guys, we're already on number three. Remember to keep the holy Lord's day and other interpretations of that is remember to keep the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And so now here's, here's where the point of contention comes because there are such things as seventh day Adventists who do their best to maintain, uh, I don't do every, anything on the seventh day yet. They reap the benefits of the people who do work on the seventh. Day. Of course. Right. We live in a culture where people are always working and they still like their electricity <laughs> on Saturday. They still, you know, enjoy the benefits of people tying their shoes and making knots and going to work. So it's this weird thing. It's a weird thing for me, but in terms of God specifically, like, he, he did something on, if you consider the seventh day creation of the universe literal, he did something on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then rested on, wait, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got that backwards. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then rested on Saturday and Saturday became the Sabbath day. Right. And so 
apparently in the Bible, no work was done on the seventh day. And what do you guys think about that? Do you think there is actually evidence that God may have actually done something on a Saturday? He rested. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, I threw that out. So I threw that out. I threw that out to a Christian and they were like, resting isn't doing anything. I'm like, well then, then it is if you're drinking grog, yeah, that's just like, well, I mean, he just did something like he looked back at his work, he reflected and stuff like that. He said it was good. He made assessments. Like I thought like you're always doing something. That's how you can like tell passing of time. Like if there was truly nothing that he was doing, then how can, then you can make the argument. I have a high level argument on this, but basically I said, Hey, he was resting. It was like, well, that doesn't count because it's like, well, it says you're not supposed to do anything on seventh. I guess Larry, what do you think? Well, what I was going to say is I've talked to Christians before. It says, how did you wake up this morning? God woke you up. You couldn't wake up if God wasn't in heaven. How about each breath you take? You know, God is responsible for making you breathe. And if all of this kind of stuff is true, then he's working on Sundays because I wake up on Sundays and I breathe on Sundays, et cetera, et cetera. If he's responsible for every little thing, even all the things that happen on Sunday, then he's working. Yeah. Yeah. So I would also like to think of it as like, I would love to have a holy God that doesn't take vacations once, once, a, once a week, because that's a lot of vacation days when you add them all up. And it also feels like it, the universe can spin crazily out of control when there's no one observing it. Right. And so either, either God is truly doing the work that he's uh, espousing as keeping the Sabbath day holy, or he's still doing the work in terms of making sure planets don't collide into each other, that gravity still works, that, you know, fire's still hot. And I, I, I can't help but believe that when people die on Friday, they don't have to wait till Sunday to get their souls processed. Right. Or something. Well, think, think of all the people going to church and worshiping on Sunday are they not praying? Is he not answering prayers on Sundays? He's not listening to Sundays prayers. Yeah. That should be like his busiest day. So, yeah. So basically there's another interesting thing. So I think you can pray on Sabbath day, but will they be answered on Sabbath day? Because that's technically work for God. That'd be an interesting yeah, right. Dread, what do you got? Well, I was just going to say, um, it, it just seems to me that, uh, you know, for the number of times that the Israelites were, uh, uh you know, in bondage, that having their Lord God say that they need to keep the Sabbath day is the way to justify saying to their uh, masters in Mesopotamia or Babylonia or wherever they happen to be, that they don't work seven days a week. They mm. get a rest day. And yeah. So they yeah. just codified that into, well, hey, it wasn't me that said that. It was God. Mm. Can you argue with God? Yeah. And I wonder like slaves don't really get an off day. So like, I mean, why is it that, you know, God takes one day a week off and, and like, literally that can't just be a standard for everybody. Though I do like the idea of at least one day off, you know, I like my two days off a week, maybe even more, but I would say it's a weird concept to be a Christian who might be in a fire and you're like, please God help me from this fire. And God's like, uh, today's my off day. <laughs> I would say anyone who felt like they've had God listen to them on a Saturday is a recognition that God is breaking one of the 10 commandments. Cause that's not what his job is to do. There's an explicit list of things that you're allowed to do on Sabbath day. And it's basically, you can, uh, let's see, you can pray. You can think of the sick. <laughs> you can visit the sick, but you shall not do any work or your son or daughter, or your male servant, or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. No work. So yeah, that's, that's a bizarre, that's a very bizarre concept. So you can't milk a cow on Sunday. Your cow can't even make milk on Sunday. <laughs> that's what that well, means. I mean, that's how, awesome. how many people, <laughs> how many Jews and Christians uh, will allow their women to work on Sundays, like cook, uh, clean, you know, cook or, their meals or be CEOs or start my, their own uh, businesses. But my there's old another one. Landlord, who was a, who was an Orthodox Jew, and and uh, trained as a butcher in Poland, hmm. told me that um, uh, they they are allowed to take care of their livestock on the Sabbath. Okay, so I bet you everybody takes concessions left and right. You look in the road; there's a lot of Christians on the street driving on Sundays. 
So I'm totally yeah. fine. With it. Right. Yeah. It's not all atheists out there on Sundays in traffic, right? right. So, Hey, I want to finish ha- at least halfway through this list before we get to the, the bottom of the half. So I'll say this is number five, honor thy father and thy mother. You guys might've heard this also as obey your parents. <laughs> Listen to me, right? Uh, yeah. My thing is, I think respect needs to be earned and isn't necessarily a birthright towards kids or towards the parents. And it, there have been examples of bad parents. And so you should be able to recognize that. And that doesn't necessarily mean you should honor them straight out. If they treat you right and they respect you and they, they look care and love for you, absolutely. That deserves some, you know, retribution, respect and, and love, but by a creed from an authoritarian figure, I don't think it holds as much weight. Right. Yeah. There are a lot of parents that I would think that aren't, aren't worth respect um, for their actions against their own children. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. George, what do you think about honoring your mother and father? Oh, you're on mute, my friend. What do I think about it? Yeah. Well, I know, uh, what, I th- I know what I think about it. Talk to me. <laughs> A, a lot of people have pretty bad parents. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, if, you're, if your parent is telling you to kill somebody, I don't think that's worth honoring. But see, that's my own per- personal view. And I think we're talking about um, the Christian belief system here. You know, so, something we don't hear a lot about, and this is going to be a silly, silly argument. This is the part where all the Christians just turn off their TVs and never listen to me again. But like, you always hear about God, you hear about God's son, but you never hear about God's parents. So speaking of never honoring your mother and father, you never hear about where'd God come from? <laughs> Where's his parents? It's like, don't worry about them. Don't worry about the other gods. I'm the most important one right here. Dread, what do you got? Uh, just dot his trading room. He's on online right now. Sure. He says, you got it all wrong with God. God is timeless. Thus, it takes him no time to do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just step out of time here and do everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. isn't that good? That's still <laughs> that interdimensional that travel. Can, that still exactly. costs. That still costs something. I, I can circumvent yeah. my own rule. I guarantee you the entropy on that is not zero. So, uh, <laughs> right. Let me throw out We're one good. last thing. Uh, Jesus, you know, has in stories walked into temples and thrown things off the of shelves and oh, he tore created. stuff off fabrics. Yeah, go for it. He made his own scourge. He, he made his away, own made his own scourge, came back and then upset the tables and beat the vendors who were there, the exchangers of money. I would not so. say if there's any, so listen, you can say whatever you want with, as far as like Jesus trying to like save the reputation of the Holy God, but I can at least guarantee you, uh, what's this that Joseph, uh, Mary's, Mary's boyfriend slash eventual husband probably got a phone call, the equivalent of which back in the bronze age. And I was like, your son did some really, really messed up stuff today, sir. And he's just like, oh, he's not really my kid, but okay, yeah, I'll have a talk with him. <laughs> you got to honor your father and mother, kid. Listen, you don't do this. So you're not my real dad. It's like, I'm taking, I'm feeding you. <laughs> I am feeding you. Learn how to use a hammer for crying out loud. I'm trying my yeah. best. Joseph gets no respect, no love. Yeah. And you think honor your mother and father, there's no better example of disrespect than what Jesus did to Joseph. I'm just right. saying right there. It's yeah. pretty good. So God, well, we're at the bottom of the hour, I think over we five go on. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, right. Okay. This is the digital free thought radio hour. We're on WOZO radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM WOZO radio. Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the digital free thought radio hour. I'm daughter five and we're on WOZO radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today, Sunday, September 12th, 2021. Uh, let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings every Tuesday evening during COVID. But uh, we also are meeting in person again at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City every Tuesday evening between like 5:30 and 8 out on the patio. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? 
Start, Start one. one. That's right. Uh, where do we want to pick up there, Wombat? I'm sharing a really fun link that we were talking about during the half hour break, which was the link that takes you to where Google thinks it knows about you. And it's, I recommend uh, everyone <laughs> check out uh, or Google, Google advertising, what Google advertising knows about you, or check out your adsense.google account for a quick little review on things you may not even known about yourself. You might find good opportunities to start new hobbies based on Google's thoughtful suggestions. So I want to talk about the 10 commandments and how God's been breaking all of them since the beginning of time. And I think it's a fun topic. I think it's something that we should consider when a lot of, when a lot of people say I stand for Christian values when it's their God, who's not standing for Christian values in the first place. And so we're going to take it up for number six, number six, by the way, the numbers change based on which versions of the book that you're talking about. The Bible right. is not a consistent document, but we're doing our best to try to take a general approach, but one Plus. There are at least two versions of the of the Ten Commandments in the Bible itself. Correct. So we're gonna go, we're hitting all the late the hits the, the, the now that's what I call Ten Commandment Commandments, right? So thou shall not kill. I think it's a grand popular one. Uh, another one that's called thou shall not murder, and I think that's maybe a more recent revision. But still, thou shall not kill. Um, has God ever killed anybody? Does anybody know, Larry? Um, Besides the entire planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was only He's one time. That was only hundreds. one time, Larry. Come on. Oh, come well, on. you know, so come on. Could, I, could we get away with that? <laughs> oh, yeah. And what kills, what gets me uh, is that he kills people who he's not even trying to punish. Like mm -hmm. uh, one time David took a, a census when he wasn't supposed to, and God gave his followers a plague, which killed like 40,000 of them, yeah. or he killed uh, the firstborn of every Egyptian household, yeah. you know, innocent babies because he was PO'd at a, at a Pharaoh. The he kills a lot of babies. There's a the lot Bible. of babies that get killed. Yeah. He, he, and he tells people, uh, the, his followers, the Israelites in the Bible, uh, to kill people, you know, go over there and kill these people. Uh, he does it all the time. Yeah. Um, but you know, he's using well, a proxy in that matter, but he does directly kill a lot of people. It's really bizarre. Cause you know, Christians really love protecting the lives of babies that are still, you know, dependent on the wombs of women yet. God really loves killing babies and they never bring that up in a conversation. It's very bizarre. Dread. It looked like you were about to say something. Has has God ever killed anybody? Murder. Yes. I, I and I was I was just going to uh, point out that I I bought this. Okay. It's the Skeptic Annotated Bible. Okay. And it is a a, a great resource um, for uh, so so someone has gone through the Bible and and pulled up all the contradictions and pulled up all the instances where God has killed somebody. How's the book not this big? I, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> well, it's, it's marginalized, right? So, uh, if, if you see there, okay, man, references man. There. yeah, that's basically it's twice really, the book. It's, it's great. It's, uh, I've been reading through it. I just working through, uh, Exodus. Now I, I've gone through Genesis and, uh, and it's a, it's a fascinating read from the perspective of someone who's looking at it critically um so uh yeah god kills people all the time <laughs> even on sundays even on sundays so you know murder oh i'm sorry george brown or uh, george the second do you want to weigh on does god kill people i have no idea he has no idea hey you know from a skeptic's point of view that's a reasonable answer right but from the bible's well, I, I point of view if you're taking well, that as an actual truth, that makes no sense, right? Like you have in your book, your holy book, examples of God killing people in your own holy book, right? It's not like I'm a, I'm an atheist yes. being angry at God for killing people. Yes. I'm saying you as a Christian believe this book about your God. And in that book, God is killing people and simultaneously telling you not to kill people and is simultaneously killing babies left and right. And I think we would agree in any context that this is murder. God is the unitary executive. Okay. The unitary executive. Yeah. Borrowing from American history not too long ago when that term first was uttered. Hmm. Um, in other words, God can get away with anything and everything, basically. 
he doesn't though like he says he does and you can claim you do you can do you can do the trump thing where you just say it enough times where you hope it's true but none of the stuff he's saying isn't falling out of recognition from people who are skeptical minded and being like hey you're not supposed to be able to do that and you're telling me not to do it no you're i'm not listening to your rules anymore and i feel like it wasn't until i read the bible with that mindset that i was able to reject the bible on terms of what the bible was saying because i it's not like i didn't it's not like I hated God. It was just clearly there's nothing in here for me to teach me how to be a good person when mm-hmm. I actually read this book because everything this character is doing is terrible. Mm-hmm. Dread. Uh, well, I was just going to say uh, on that very thing is that uh, a lot of people, without even trying to be critical of the Bible, you know, the, the like I, I remember hearing a couple on a couple of occasions, uh, you know, well-known atheist saying. I became an atheist because I started reading the Bible. That's what compelled yep. them to get away from religion because the further they dug into it, the the more horrible <laughs> a collection of tales it was. All right. Let's but see. doesn't God get a pass, you know, like can God go out on Fifth Avenue and kill somebody? Nah. And get and get away with it. I, I think he can because the rules do not apply to God. Just and like I, everybody else. And that's that quote I said is that the gods have their own laws. And I don't believe that because neither do I believe in gods nor above rules. I think you you lead by example is how I would say it. And so mm. even if there's a being that says I'm above rules, it's like you can claim something to be the case, but that right. which is presented without any sort of evidence it can be dismissed can be without dismissed. any evidence. And yeah. just with the God claim, I'm, I'm yeah, rejecting that's, uh, that. But, I mean, that's Hitchens razor, Hitchens razor. If you're talking mm-hmm. about insurance companies, uh, people act, uh, die from acts of God all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, I have, I want to move on to the next one. Cause I think this might be a point of contention, but uh, the next one on the list, number seven, again, I, I think thou shalt not kill is probably the closest we've ever gotten to actually getting a useful uh <laughs> commandment out in terms of like how we need to treat one another. But I feel like we can find many excuses where killing might actually be absolutely necessary in terms of like uh, re- reducing needless harm, um, moving, making, moving past really bad situations, protecting yourself. I think there are examples where killing can be not only justified, but good. And the fact that we spent, you know, many, many rules already explicitly, talking about how to respect God and how to have him above all else, but not adding literally four words for thou shalt not kill, but not expounding on that just a little bit. Thou shalt not kill under these circumstances, X, Y, Z. I feel like there's some lacking there in that, in that rule. Cause it was the first good one we had dread. What's up? Well, and the thing is God then commands them to go and kill the Canaanites or the Moabites or, you know, whoever in order to take their land from them. And we're, we're definitely going to get there. We're definitely going there. We're definitely getting there. So number seven, I believe we're on number seven right now. So thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, George, adultery is having <laughs> uh, sexual intercourse with someone who is married, who is not your partner, more or less, right? It is a very, yeah, think about it. It's voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who's not like their their husband or wife or his or her spouse. Right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. adultery. Okay, yes, yes. okay. Right. That is a very weird rule to, <laughs> to have after, don't murder anyone, Except that's my sixth most important rule. And then the other one, don't, don't bang my wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, okay. Or any wife. It's like, what about slavery? We're still waiting for slavery. It's like, I, I'll get there. Maybe I'll get there. Dread. What's up? Dread. What's well, up? I was just going to say that, uh, you know, it goes further than just committing actual physical adultery Talk uh, because the sin of course is even if you contemplate uh, contemplated in your mind. So it's thought. Yeah. That is its own rule. That is its own rule that we will talk about in this list. So this is specifically just the banging part. We'll talk about <laughs> wanting to bang in a, in a rule later down the road. Oh, oh, so God, co- coveting. God, uh, yeah. God is very specific about these rules. He has two rules solely dedicated on you will respect me no matter what. And then many rules about don't bang my wife. He's very, very, very anti don't bang my wife and respect me at all. Like that's taken up already half the rules we've talked about and don't kill, don't kill. 
don't bang my wife and respect me under all circumstances. Larry, what's up? Well, these are the craziest rules. You know, you wouldn't think that God has a wife, but according to the book of Kings, he does. Asherah. uh, Whoa. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So he himself committed adultery with Mary and had a child by her. Well, Mary. Oh, Oh. yeah. According to the Bible. Just say that one more time, Larry. I want to know this. So, like you said, well, God has raped her, right? Well, well he, who is, this, a, who is he, this God's wife? He, it, in my Holy head, spirit did. In my head, I wouldn't want to be a woman in Mesopotamia, Bronze Age, where it's like someone says, "Hey, by the way, you're going to get pregnant, and you're not going to be married to anybody." I'm just letting you know that's happening. Bye. And I'd be like, "Ooh, you basically gave me a death sentence because this is not a place that likes that kind of thing." And I don't have educated. I don't have a partner. You basically took all the value that my parents put in me because. I'm literally just stocked to be married off to somebody else. Yeah. And now I'm completely screwed. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. But you said God was already married, Larry. What was up with that? Yeah. Well, she's consort. I don't know if you carry the call that her, his wife or something, but um, according to the book of Kings, I'm looking this up now, just look up Google God's wife and it'll come up as sure. God had a wife, a sure book of Kings suggests that she was worshiped alongside what Yahweh in the temple. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And, uh, according to an Oxford scholar, uh, God's wife was Ashira. So interesting, mm. you know. So yeah, and I hear what you're saying to Dread about like the whole how Mary was not most likely not consensually into the idea of getting impregnated oh. by God. It seems like it's a very bad thing, but it wasn't. But Christians would argue that wasn't sex. But I'm like, he, she got, she got a set of DNA from something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Larry, I'd, I'd like to say that God didn't even tell her himself that right. he was going to impregnate an angel. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. he sent a messenger boy. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's just like, hey, congratulations, you're going to get pregnant. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I hate this, this idea. I hate this idea a lot. <laughs> This is a new form of sex, man. Mm-hmm. It's going to be amazing. Messenger. Oh, my God. Sex by messenger. So, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, the ultimate you know, incubus. In the future, that might be the way how we do it, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know. Like, if COVID gets worse, <laughs> we may just have <laughs> <laughs> downloadable programs that knock on people's door and just say, hey, congratulations, we just impregnated you. Anyway, back to, back to the serious messages, guys. Uh, we are going into the next commandment, which is, in my head, getting closer to, we've only had two good ones in terms of conduct, but thou shalt not steal. I feel like I find that to be a classic. So you should never steal. And I think we'll go immediately back to what Dredd was saying about the Canaanites and, and, uh, uh, yeah. and the hordes of people whose land got taken away because they weren't God's chosen people. Exactly. Take their livestock, take their women, take their children take their stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're in Ecclesiastes right now, right? There's going to be some really fun chapters in 10 and I believe 21. That's all dictate how you take people's stuff. Yeah. How long, yeah. How long you can hold them as slaves, basically forever, how you can enslave their kids and, and rules for when you set them free, by the way, there's not really good rules for setting them free. You just keep them and their kids forever yeah. and don't beat them so hard that uh they die within two days yeah yeah you know, yeah, yeah, yeah it might even be gracious Crazy in some stuff. translations as three days isn't that nice okay <laughs> so uh there are in my head some cases where you should be able to steal and i think um stealing is always a matter of perspective right like but i think we can make ground rules where it's like under most circumstances, ceiling is not okay, but there are exceptions where we will allow it as a society and we can merit whether or not this was actually a punishment worth severe punishment or, you know, like maybe take it as a learning lesson or maybe roll this person back to society. Um, and I feel like when you make God have these short four word commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not steal or not kill. But when it comes to like adultery or like taking his name in vain, you get these like many, many long espouse virtues. I feel like there's a short sightedness there because stealing and killing aren't necessarily so simple that you can make it so concise. Right. You should expand on like conditions for when stealing is okay. And maybe why stealing is bad and, and when are the lines and how we should punish people? Not just tell me it's wrong, but tell me how do we treat people who we do find have committed these things? Mm-hmm. Um, I know I've stolen cable. 
Ah, I've stolen music. I've stolen music. I went on the internet. And I used to steal music like all the time. And then I thought to myself, am I really stealing music? Cause the music is still there. I just have a copy of it. If anything, like these bits are completely <laughs> right. different than those bits. So exactly. like what's going on here? Am I stealing? Wow. Next thing you know, now everybody's streaming. <clears throat> if they're charging money for them, it's like, that was the same thing I was doing back in the nineties. <laughs> I was downloading stuff yeah. way before it was even a platform. Now it's more convenient to download from the platform. Like if anything, I was supporting the infrastructure that ultimately led to this, you know, capitalization market that we're in right now i don't know i have i have a lot of weird opinions like that but we're going to go on to the next one which is thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor a multi-word in my head uh commandment that i do feel has value like you should not lie as a witness against your neighbor what do you think about that larry um Sounds good to me. Uh, I can't think of an instance from the Bible where God has lied, but um, I will. Give me a second. <laughs> I go on, go on to someone else. <laughs> okay, so I, in my oh, head, I got one. I got one I, already. I, I got, I got two. Uh, go ahead, he Larry. Told, go ahead. He told Adam and Eve that if they ate from the fruit of the oh. tree of knowledge, they would die, and they don't. Right. I. So that's I have, a lie. I have, I have multiple examples where God talks, you know, or Jesus talks back, talk about, you know, Satan and every single time. And this is after like, you, you know, I'm reading the whole Bible. I'm doing it skeptically. It's like, what has Satan done? That is the worst thing that you didn't allow Satan to do, you know? And it's like the worst thing Satan did was like, tell a bunch of nudist dietary advice uh, on, on like what fruits to eat. Right. For the most part. And like offer Jesus water <laughs> when he was thirsty. And I'm like, where's the worst things he's done. Cause in between those two things, God went through like four genocides against people. And I'm just like, where's the, where are the, where's the bad stuff? And I'm not saying I'm a Satanist. I'm just saying like, if you start blindly and you read the Bible and you don't know which one's the good character and the bad character, right. it, the Bible feels very much like the bad character writing a story about how the good character is a terrible person. And in my head, it's like, you are almost bearing a false witness to humanity. Cause if you ask anybody who's a Christian, they'll say Satan's the bad one. And I'm like, well, what did he do? That's bad. Um, uh, not a lot of answers. Like, well, he's, he gives people cancer. Like that's what God does. God gives people cancer. Well, he, he makes people feel bad. It's like, w in what way? Cause God is ma master of like your feelings. It's like, well, he makes me feel good when I do stuff that God tells me not to do. It's like, <laughs> so God made a system where you can feel pretty good about these things. And God right. came up with the rules of the things that you're not supposed to do. And, and God, and Satan's the only one being like, you can marry whoever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter if you love that person. It's like, no, no, no. God said that's a sin. Sorry if I'm talking to myself. I do feel like there's not a lot of examples that are clear cut for Satan being bad. And I feel like every admission or every statement that's against Satan in the Bible almost feels like bearing false witness because you're hearing it from a person who has committed genocide and who has killed babies and glossed over it to the next story in his book every single time. I feel like that's one of the biggest examples. Does anyone have any others, Dred? Well, uh, Larry, you had one, didn't you? Um, a lie. Yeah, I just, I just mentioned it um, oh. about Adam and Eve lying to Adam and Eve. Oh, that's a great one. That's a great one. Okay. Uh, well, Jordan? I mean, he, uh, if God knows where everybody, you know, who, who knows everything about everybody, he was walking through the garden saying, "Where are you guys?" You know. Yes. You, you know, yes. that's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but like when Cain killed Abel and God's like, where's your brother? It's like, you know where my brother is. Cain, I think, well, I feel like Cain actually said that. And someone's like, you know what I, what I did. Don't pretend like you don't know what I just did. It's like, I don't like it when you talk to me like that. It's like, you know, you made me talk to you like this. You made this universe where this stuff happens. George, we're having some fun here. I, I want to make sure you're not. Oh, well, I'm, just, out. I'm, watch, I'm just watching you guys and, and listening because you're all former Christians and, you know, you, you grew up with the baggage and had to throw it off. You know, I, I didn't have to do any of that. I, I got a pass. I, yeah, I feel like know? the great lie in the Bible is that Satan is somehow worse than God. And I feel like well, everybody literally. walks away from the Bible with that impression, but that is mm -hmm. nowhere at all explicit in the Bible. In fact, the I opposite would say dramatically true. Um, for, for those of you who are watching on YouTube or listening on, on WOZO, 
if you don't know it, I was raised an atheist and I come from a Jewish background. So I did not get this indoctrination. Sure. And, <laughs> and um, to me, a lot of the information is actually new, hmm. even at, at my advanced age. So, and George, um, I feel like if you were to read the Bible with no context whatsoever, you would read it and be like, oh man, this character just killed everybody except for one family in a boat. Nah. Well, I, I would, you see, and, and yeah. let me tell you what the thoughts are that are going through my mind as I'm listening to you all, so, because um, I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, a neighbor of mine, was give, lecturing me about heaven and hell <laughs> here here in the Bible Belt, and and uh, you know what what he's implying, and I've heard many people say, is believe unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So none of these rules mean anything mm. if you simply believe in Jesus Christ, you're home free. Mm. Now, That's I understand the Christian... Catholic... <clears throat> What's that? That's the Christian approach. Yeah, you don't have no. to, you don't have to obey any commandments because, you know, when you're ready to give up the ghost, you just say, I take the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart and I'm forgiven. And George, I think you brought yeah. up a topic that's worthwhile to have a full discussion on next week. But I do want to get through these last two commandments just before. Yeah. Like the whole idea of Jesus being used as a loophole is definitely worth talking about. But we got only two more left. And I do want to make one more point before we move on from thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. The, one of the other big examples for me is when God invites Satan to heaven to play pranks on, on, on a job. J-O-B. Job, yeah. Job. Job. yeah. And like is literally hanging out with Satan and Satan's like, you know, I, this guy probably is a nice dude. He's like, no, no, no. He's the nicest guy. He'll love me no matter what I do to him. Check this out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and Satan's like, okay, I'm mm -hmm. not telling you to do it. And stuff. I was like, no, I'm going to kill half his family. I'm going to kill all his crap. No, I'll kill his whole family. Look, he's, I'm going to give him warts. I'm, I'm going to do all these bad things. And he still loves me. Isn't that great? Okay. I'm going to make some new people. Now there is new family. Now there is new stuff. <laughs> Everything's even, okay, go back to hell. That in my head is like, if he, if Satan is literally as bad as God would espouse to the point where he's made a whole revelation for war against Lucifer, right? Why is he inviting him buddy, buddy into heaven to start playing pranks on his people? Like that is such a uh, contrast of like, you say this guy's a, bear, a terrible person. He's clearly your neighbor yet. You've made this entire narrative against him yet. You're hanging out with him and having fun in heaven. That seems very bizarre to me. That is, that is bearing false witness as explicitly as you can get. <laughs> Next one, number nine, Dred's favorite, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. <laughs> We're going back to you. Don't bang my wife. Don't and by the way, or <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the very last one. But it's like, don't bang my wife. Don't even think about banging my, waivers, my wife. And it's right. funny how like, after like a couple of steps, it like comes back in like even more important. It's just like, I just want to make sure you're very clear that no one bangs my wife. All right. Okay. <laughs> but thought crime, thought crime. Yes, yeah, thought crime. Yeah. You were talking about how the Bible is a terrible indictment of God himself, you know, because it, it was almost like it was written by Satan because God's such a terrible character. And it's like, yes. Yeah. It's almost <laughs> it's like, also, also it's think almost, about how, how terrible indictment of humans it is for their gullibility and willingness to follow such an exactly. horrible right. entity. Yeah. Oh, trust me. And we just went through four years of showing that we haven't really progressed much. <laughs> but like, if right. I were to ask Trump to write a memoir of himself, it would very much be, well, here's all the things, amazing things I did, all the amazing things I created. I did all these amazing things. I'm a very amazing person. And don't listen to this Obama guy. He's the worst or, person yeah. ever. I was like, okay. It's like, it feels like that's the book you got. And everyone's like, Trump's the best one. Obama's the worst. <laughs> like, I feel like that's the world we live in right now. Just on a supernatural front. What's up, George? Well, I'm just saying, are you describing God as a narcissist? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Sure. absolutely. Oh, yeah. The I'm first two rules. Again. The very first two rules, you know? Anyway, we're going to go to the very last rule before we close out today. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. I hate both of these rules because I think we've shown, in even in the Bible, that God has recognized people for their beauty and purity, which were like, in my head, the two biggest attributes that people coveted 
when they were looking for wives themselves, or at least value in women. Cause that's the only time women have any value in the Bible is when they're either virgins or, uh, act like they're virgins. So I heard a voice in my head that told me atheism was true. <laughs> <laughs> and not marry them. Uh, uh, or maybe marry them by killing their husbands and stuff like that. It's a, it's a whole situation. The Lila, very beautiful, but all she does is tell, you know, Samson to cut his hair and, and she eventually gets her due to the lady that gets turned into salt. I'm sorry. I don't know your name. There's no good characters that are female in the Bible, except for the ones that are pure and virginal. Yeah. And so for the most <clears throat> part, it seems like God's single-handedly picking Mary did so on a purpose, didn't marry her but clearly coveted her and she was already committed to Joseph. And I feel like Joseph gets the shortest stake in the Bible. One of the best dads, no one credits him whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, was, he was cuckold by God. Yeah, basically. I don't know if we can say on the radio, but there we go. We're just going to let that fly through. And then we'll go into thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. You know, that's like cars. That's like jobs. That could be anything. That could be livestock. It could be so many different things. And I feel like, the bedrock of capitalism. <laughs> Indeed. Right. If there's one thing that God is angry about <clears throat> Satan for, it's that once upon a time, Satan thought he was pretty, right? <laughs> this whole, what? this whole it supernatural, what? this whole supernatural fight that's going on oh. between the two is because God thought Satan was a little too pretty, not pretty in general sense, but prettier than God. And in my head, that's like, we already established that Satan and God are neighbors. Right. And so for, God to think it should be illegal for you to think that you're prettier than me. Cause you're not prettier than me because I'm prettier. I'm pretty. I'm going to do whatever I can to be pretty. I'm going to get all the extra <laughs> angels. I'm going to get extra extra followers. I'm going to invite you to my place in heaven where I can point out the things that you don't have as bets that I already know will happen. It's like, you are clearly insecure to a level that has caused all of humanity, all this distress. And I feel like it's not about wise. And I'm glad that you separated wise from good at least. Right. So they aren't seeing this property, but there's clearly an insecure thought crime barrier that God has in terms of like, Hey, you can't think about these kinds of things. And I, I just find that really, really weird because he turns around and tries to justify, you know, his own actions in that same capacity too. Right. Dread. Thoughts. I don't want to have the final thoughts on this, but coveting thy neighbor's good. Is that even a bad thing? What's that? Is coveting your neighbor's good, even a bad thing? Like, I, I, well, I don't really think so. Like, like Larry says, it's the bedrock of uh, modern uh, consumerism. Um, mm. You know, if I didn't like my neighbor's car, who was driving an Audi Q7, well, you know, uh, why, you know, I don't know. It just seems like a silly, silly thing. It's, a, it's like, I like your shirt. I might get a shirt like yours, Dredd. Right. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I might want to covet your goods, <laughs> but I'd get my own shirt. Yeah. It's not like I'm taking your shirt. I'm not stealing. I'm just being like, hey, that's a cool shirt. I might want a shirt like that. Yeah. Larry, yeah. cool shirts. I might want to rock shirts like that too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just saying you got a cool piano behind me, George. Like there's things where I think it's okay to want stuff. It's a question more about your intentions and how you actually act. What's What are your actual actions, right? Your actions and your intentions behind them. Thinking, think all you want. I'd like to think that if you think bad things but still do good things, it's a good sign of your character because you're making sure you're keeping your inhibitions in check, right? Mm -hmm. So what does religion say about that? Yeah, Larry... Yeah. Because, you know, you could be a vegetable on a, on a medicine table and people would be like, oh, look at this person. He's not coveting any neighbor's goods. He's yeah. not coveting his <laughs> wife. He's not stealing. Anything. This is the ideal Christian right here. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, yeah. my. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're, we're pretty much running out of time here. Uh, All right, Larry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Final words? Uh, check out Let's Chat on YouTube. Dread Pirate, where can we find you at? Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. I'm on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. live streaming this very show. Very cool. George, where's the best coffee? The best coffee. Best coffee. This is, there are good coffees out there. Nice. But uh, my it's focus at your is house, on, though. Well, I just, I just make do, really. Uh, my focus is on narcissism, and, and okay. you know, I just want to say to everybody, just learn as much about narcissism as you possibly can. Cool. 
It's a great topic. Nice. Larry? Cool. My own content is, can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Ramen. Ramen. Am I going to your hell, Larry? Huh?